Welcome to the press conference here in the Swiss Pavilion at the Architecture Biennale in Venice. I am Chantal Hirschi from the Communications Department at the Swiss Arts Council Pralvezia, and I will guide us through this press conference today. A very warm welcome to all the journalists that are here with us in Venice, and a very warm welcome to everybody joining us via live stream on Pralvezia slash live. We are very happy that you took the time to get um, more insights into the Swiss contribution ORE experiences on the border. If you are joining us on, uh, live, on the live stream, there is a section underneath the live stream where you can put your questions in the chat and we will try to answer them at the end of the press conference. We will have a, a question and answer section at the end there. After one year without the Biennale, I am very happy to be here and also a little bit surprised. Um, it was a quite challenging year. First, the Biennale was postponed to the end of summer, then it was postponed to this year. But here we are against all the odds, together with the project team of ORE. The project team based in Geneva and Lausanne, um, consists of Vanessa Lacay. She is an architect and landscape architect. She works together with Munir Ayub, who is also architect and journalist. Then we have filmmaker Fabrice Aragno, who has uh, contributed the, the filmic language to this project. And we have Pierre Shevsky, who is an artist sculptor who did the models with the people on the border, but also the models that you can see here in the pavilion. Joining us is also Madeleine Schupli, head of the Visual Arts Division at Prolvezia, and she will lead through the roundtable discussion after. We would like to start with a making of movie. Uh, the making of movie will show you how the project came into being and how it developed. It will be shown here on the screen in the pavilion uh, and also streamed live in the chat. If you have troubles uh, with the lighting today a little bit, you will be able to see the movie uh, later on online on our Facebook channel or on our website. So we are ready for the... Maybe the main idea of the project is on the title of the project. Orae is a Latin word and it was a synonym of a border and an edge, also a beginning of something. Orea, experiences on the border, talks about national borders, about what they mean. They are so important for our lives, but we don't know much about them. We don't know how they look like. We don't know much about the lives of the people living along the border. With this project, the team investigates what opportunities, what problems the border offers. We think that architects has to take care of this territory because it's a collective space. It's where architecture can reach political engagement. We are absolutely convinced that the border is the laboratory of the 21st century and um, it's an amazing place to see, to observe, to understand and probably to work on the contemporary space. The project team travelled to the Swiss border and they made a stop at several locations. There they engaged with the local population. They wanted to meet the people, find out about their lives. So we went to the territory, we traveled all around Switzerland and its neighbor countries with our mobile studio and the pluridisciplinary team, asking and collecting the experience of the inhabitants and their perception and what is the reality of the border for them. It's a long time working with people, we learned from them. It takes a lot of time and it was amazing and beautiful. In the exhibition here at the Swiss Pavilion, the centerpiece is the large gallery. You are surrounded by visual and acoustic impressions. You have videos, you have models. They portray the people that the team met on site. 
and the models they tell us about how these people imagine their surrounding their living space. It's not about reading long texts, it's about an immersive experience with all of your senses. The main goal of the exhibition is to show the diversity of the border and the complexity of the border as an inhabited territory. About the models, what is really important is they are mental models. Each one is like a diagram that represents the perception of each person of his territory. It didn't start with the question of scale, of what uh, they are going to represent. We just asked them what represent the border in your everyday life. So they start without nothing. And uh, Pierre was helping also to, to develop a kind of language, yeah. a kind of uh, way to represent, to modelize in three dimension, the perception, also the thought, and also the hope for these territories. And it's really interesting. All this process was uh, captured by the video. It has the has the capacity to catch the, the emotion and the, the portraits of each one of these people who did the models. We are two architects, landscape architect, journalist, one filmmaker and one artist sculptor. So it was really a chance to share our knowledge and also to share it with the inhabitants that teach us a lot of things. I had the chance to join the team when they worked at the triple frontier between Germany, France and Switzerland near the city of Basel. And it was fascinating to see how they worked together with a Swiss person that crosses the border every day with his bike to get to work in Weil am Rhein. It was clear that the border could be something very transparent, very soft. But the team, on the other hand, also worked with refugees, for instance, at the Swiss border in the south, border to Italy. And there, obviously, they were confronted with completely different notion and perception of what the border can be. We had uh, an extraordinary experience of the reality of the border, the diversity of the situation and the people we met. Maybe what we learned from the people who are living on the border and who we met during these two years, that the border could be something else, could be a beginning of a project, of a collective something, and um, it could be a place of passage, of alterity, of complexity too. So thank you very much for this movie. Um, so what is the border? How deep is it? And what does it look like? And what could it possibly be? I'd like to hand over to Madeleine Schupli for the roundtable discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Chantal. A very warm welcome from my side as well. Thanks for joining our press conference. I'm glad to do a conversation with the ORA team. And so we can give you, with this conversation, an introduction to the, um, to the project. Uh, by the way, there are seats here in the front as well. Please um, go ahead, it's more comfortable maybe, uh, if you want to, to use the seats. Okay, so uh, let's start with the first question for, for Munir. Yeah. Or uh, experience on the board, that is the sounding title of your project. Please tell us, what is the project about? So yes, the, the main idea of the project is maybe we can read it on the title directly. Uh, Orae is a Latin word, it's an old word, uh, it's, uh, synonyms of border. And um, we choose this word because for us it, was, it is very important because it signifies the edge of the territory, the border, the border, but also in the figurative way it signifies the beginning of something. And uh, the idea of this project is to reconsider, to re-observe mm -hmm. the border as a beginning of a collective project. And why did you choose the subject of the border? Why is this issue relevant today? Yeah, uh, we choose this issue of the border because we are convinced, we are absolutely convinced that the border uh, is the laboratory where we can see, when we can observe, when we can understand and uh, 
the, the, the contemporary issues. You know, this, uh, this 10 years, we, we, we have seen a lot of uh, important things happening in the border, and, uh, and it's a place where architecture can reach a political engagement. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle of your work, Vanessa, the outbreak of the pandemic occurred. This was certainly a challenge for you, but I understood that you took it also as a chance to rethink um, the theme again. So what impact did the crisis, the pandemic, um, have on your project? Or yeah. on the theme also of the board? How did you look at it after this experience? Yes, when we started the project two years ago, the subject of the border was not uh, in the middle of the, the, the surrounding, the, the meaning. But now with the pandemic, we, we discover that the border is really a, ter a territory that reacts really fast. We, we have seen lots of border close, cl closed again. And um, this, uh, this pandemic uh, makes us uh, going further in the project. We, we really want to try to go on on the territory and it makes this, the, the subject more relevant. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to the working progress. How did you go about? You, um, we have here the ORA team. You quite consciously decided to work in a multidisciplinary team with all kind of different um, uh, experiences in your team. Why is that important to you? The, the pluridisciplinary uh, team is really important in this project because we, we try to use our disciplines, our knowledge to, to research on the territory. We, we decide to share the, our skills, our knowledge uh, to, to share it with the inhabitants and to, to learn from them. We use it to, to, to look at the territory in another way. Mm -hmm. And now, Fabrice, for instance, you as a filmmaker, how did you intervene with your medium, the, the film? Well, as uh, cinema is a uh, humanist, per definition, uh, mm -hmm. uh, media, and as I, in fact, I, I don't know anything. I always put myself as a child, uh, or as a, a eyes of a child. So, uh, I just bring my camera as a, a looking glass to, to cap without words, what was the perception for the people that we meet. And also, sometimes also the stories huh, with sounds, but also the movement of the hands, of the building, of mm -hmm. that models. And it was very nice to see, I really discovered this, because I, I really I don't know anything, to see how the gesture of the hands of Pierre, for example, give a cutting uh, tool to someone to cut to begin to cut the models, and on the other way, how someone making a draw on a piece of, of uh, spume of the material mm -hmm. that we use there, to give it back to Pierre to, to build the model. It was really a transmission thing, so. mm -hmm. and then there is a, mm -hmm. all the, and tried to build a language, and what was, in, in fact, what is nice is to build a language with hands, and in three dimensions. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and okay. as Denis de Rougemont said, the real condition of human is to think with hands. So there, there is a lot of thinking in ha made with hands, but more with, uh, there is sentiments and feelings. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, and uh, yeah, speaking of the hands, speaking of your journey to the Swiss border that you uh, undertook. Tell us about how you worked uh, on the border, you met the people. Uh, how did this, this go, this um, working in the field, so to say? But, um, yes, when we, when we went to the, to the territory, we decided to travel all around Switzerland and asking the simple question, how deep is the border and what is the impact of the, the life of the inhabitants? And it was amazing to discover the, the diversity of the situation of the border and the diversity of the people who live there. We discovered that the, the border is an inhabited territory. It's not just a line on the map. So uh, the, the, the first uh, meeting was to, to ask uh, uh, the inhabitants to build, to modelize their representation of the border. We, we had so, so many so many different people that uh, tell us so many stories that you will discover in the room. And um, 
we, we kept, we kept these this, uh, stories by mobile modeling, but also after uh, one year of work, we decided to come back on the territory to ask people to collective things and collective uh, work with us on the future of the border in the itinerant forum that we did a mm -hmm. few weeks ago. Uh -huh. So you, I mean, the whole working process was two years, so you, had, you made a lot of your experiences yourself. So I would like to hear from each one of you, what was one of the most important, touching, most personally important experience you made during this working process? Munir, what about yeah. you? What is, was really touching for me is maybe the, the experiences we, we had just a few, few weeks ago uh, before coming here in Venice and we returned to the territory with uh, this mobile pavilion, uh, mobile forum, and uh, we met uh, a lot of people and we did discussion and it was a really hard situation because all the borders were closed at that time and uh, it was quite an important moment for me. Mm -hmm. What about you, Pierre? If you pick, <laughs> what about you, Fabrice? If you pick one of the experiences you make, what stays well, in your mind? There was a lot of uh, different emotion there, but once was in, uh, in south of uh, Ticino in Chiasso, uh, near Chiasso. We meet a refugee there, and uh, we ask some someone, a family of Afghanistan, what can you do uh, as a model for the border? We speak about borders. And they say, but you know, for us, border is just barbed wire, and we mm. cannot make uh, barbed wire models. It's not made. Able. And, and then they say, but the Swiss border, we don't see it because it was by night, and they come from the forest, or train or so. They didn't see anything about the border. Okay. And then they come the day after, and they built two models. One model from something here, a pass, and another model from another pass, from their place in Afghanistan, so the border become so deep. So it was really nice and we put it uh, there. You have to go there, huh? it's all the answer will be there, in fact, in the model, so we speak uh, their own language. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, for example, mm -hmm. I would say mm -hmm. this. Oui, merci. Et Pierre, tu pourrais partager une des expériences qui te tient au cœur, que tu as fait pendant ce processus Là, Quand on regarde en fait, le résultat qu'on a ici avec toutes ces maquettes, c'est un souvenir qui me marquant, c'est surtout un sentiment, c'est la première rencontre en fait, avec ces personnes lorsqu'on est en face de la page blanche. Et d'un seul coup, on essaie de communiquer à travers la construction d'un objet, une perception de territoire. Et du coup, c'est un nouveau langage qui, qui s'établit au fur et à mesure des participants et qui donne ce résultat euh, formel assez riche. Merci. Et toi, pour finir, Vanessa il ouais, y a eu énormément de moments très touchants et, et euh, très personnels. Il y a quelque chose qui est assez... Euh, euh, oh, so, sorry, I, I speak ah, in French. Ah, of course, we, no, no, we, it's we okay. speak English. Um, <laughs> sorry, the, the, there were lots of amazing uh, meetings we had, but uh, one of the relevant things we discover is uh, how can, be, can, two, can two people can have a different point of view on the same space. For example, we were in the in the Grecian region, and we work with two different women because the border is something different depending on who you are. And um, for one, the, the, the border was something really, really comfortable, like a paese. She, she designed uh, a model really with a little village, really detailed, and, and it was really amazing uh, how deep she could go. And uh, in another way, the, the woman who we met in the other side of the border designed uh, just a road to go on the hotel when she w where she works. And uh, she just, just designed a line uh, crossing a pass and the, the landscape disappeared. So this was really, for me, uh, impressive because uh, depending who you are, the border can be something uh, really... Um, uh, nice or easy or something really difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This brings us to the exhibition where we are here and we're talking in the middle of this uh, uh, exhibition at the Swiss Pavilion. So Munir, could you take us through a short tour uh, through the different galleries um, of the exhibition? Yeah. 
I said, my colleagues, you have to, you have to go inside. But uh, when you when you enter from the main entrance from the pavilion, you go to the big room. It's an immersive uh, installation. It's about how how to create how to create how to propose a new relationship between between media, between video and models, but either between all the models. It's for about 42 models, and then you go to this this corridorio. And you arrive to this room with this uh, with this big relational map. Uh, it's not a geographical map, but it's a relational map. It took uh, together the places we we visited, and you go outside from the pavilion before before uh, before going out. You pass from this gi from giardino, and you see some um, some pics from the uh, from the, the forum we did on site, and there is uh, some some c c some phrases we take from people we visited, we, we met. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so um, now we have our first visitors here. There will be many more coming. What are your wishes or uh, your expectations? What the visitors should take with them when they leave the exhibition? What would be the learnings or yeah, what, what would they take with them, Fabrice? I don't know that if they will learn something because I don't think we have a uh, knowledge. Uh, as I said, I know nothing. But we just share um, perception and emotion. And I hope, as I do, uh, when I come to some place, I go from always from the little door, uh, from the beginning, and then I can grow to the outside. So I hope that people could uh, hear uh, with all this perception, make their own perception uh, of. Uh, borders of a relationship, because border is also a relationship, it's an in-between two people, so uh, mm -hmm. I hope that uh, the people will, will go and see maybe the, the world. Mm -hmm. Munir, what would you say? As, a, as an architect, I, I would like that people uh, from architecture maybe um, understand hope, feel this idea we try to do, that, uh, that the border has to be a place that we, we have to work as an architect. Et toi, Pierre, tu voudrais ajouter quelque chose Quoi comme expérience tu voudrais les gens prendre avec eux quand ils partent du, du pavillon Ça rejoint ce que disait Fabrice, c'est l'opportunité de, de se créer leur propre vision en passant à travers les différentes salles qu'on a ici et puis ensuite de regarder ce qui se passe directement sur la frontière en allant à la frontière pour rejoindre mm -hmm. ce que disait aussi Mounia. Oui, merci Vanessa. <laughs> um, yes, I, I would like to uh, that the people uh, who visit the exhibition um, like us uh, find the border not as uh, simple as it seems. The border is, a, is full of complexity and diversity and um, I hope that the, the exhibition and the work we did during two years show this, this the border is not that simple. Mm -hmm. And to round up, I would like just to, to point out uh, the book that you published uh, together with the exhibition. Please introduce briefly this, this book that is part of the, of the project for you, yes. as I understood. Yes, uh, yes the, the catalog is, a, we think the catalog is a part of, uh, of the exhibition because it complete also the the journey. It's is is built as a guide, a guide of uh, of all the experiences we had uh, during during this work, but also a guide for the territory of the border. So mm -hmm. I hope you will enjoy reading it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will hand back to thank you very much, the four of you. I'll hand back to to Chantal. Thank you very much for this insight into your work. It makes uh, one really curious about the stories behind each model. Um, we would now come to the question and answer section. So I would like to open the microphone to any question that is uh, coming maybe first from here. We also opened the chat um, for the people online. Is it on? Is it working? Ah, oh, yeah, thank you. Um, I would like to push you a little bit. I'm interested in the topic of border in terms of 
our society and borders? Uh, because you have a lot of time to think about the border in general, maybe. And especially now when the border get closed, which is uh, incredible, I think, flashback of a history in Europe and over the world. So I would be interested in, is it good, the borders? I know you said it's not that simple, but I would like to push you a little bit in, the, in this topic. What, what you find out, what you could tell us, what you find out during your journey. Thank you. So, uh, our project is not about saying that if the border is good or not is good. But, the may, um, but just to say that we have to go there and to look out what happens there and to work together on these places and here in the Biennale Architectura as architects. So, there is not the idea to the, okay, the border is a good thing or not a good thing. As said, oh, I said Vanessa before, uh, it depends who you are. For someone, the border is nothing, you can pass it. For someone else, it becomes a wall. So it's really hard to answer to this question. But uh, maybe a way to answer to this question is to go to the territory and to, to, to experience it and to, to ask people living there. I'm I would just then ask you, um, so if you cannot pass it, like yeah. maybe... Uh, because I understood that then it's important to pass the border. So if you couldn't, what it would happen in the places you found out if you couldn't pass the border, basically? Uh, if you couldn't, uh, absolutely. If you couldn't pass the wall, border, it becomes a wall. And uh, as said, the example said by Fabrice before, it's uh, when we start, when there is a part of this project when we work with migrant people in Switzerland, in, uh, in Ticino, and it's uh, incredible that when, we, uh, when you ask uh, them uh, how looks the border, they answer you that they have no idea because they could, could not go to the border. So it's not as, as simple as it's not just a barbed wire or a wall. It's something in mental way. It's, uh, it's really hard. It could be a really hard place, a violent place. But I'm quite sure even if it's violent as architect, as artist, we have to work there and we have to work with that, with this violence, I think. I'd like to ask you if also beyond the book you think this could be a format to do um, politics in the territory because you uh, work with people but you, uh, I, in what I, if I understood, uh, really uh, you a border between the society and uh, the politicians because uh, the comprehension is basic to do uh, something to change uh, the politics. So uh, the, the, the question is, uh, your team is thinking something further? not just a book, but politics, architects as politicians? I, I, for, for me, there is no architecture without political engagement. So we, we have to do that. I think it's our to go on site and to work on, this, on these uh, issues. And maybe the, your first remark is quite in, important and interesting for us. It's, this project is um, it's, uh, it's about how to produce a collective knowledge with people living on a place. It's, it's mainly about that, this project. Thank you. I have a question. So you... you oh, take off the mask. Um, You've, been, you've done this project in Switzerland where you also have uh, kind of internal borders, different, different uh, linguistic regions. And uh, so my question is, do you think that what you observe in the, the border between nations, uh, this territory already exists inside the country? And uh, is it uh, is that the, the new territory that uh, you kind of uh, discovered through your uh, trip, your voyage, um, is, uh, 
explain also how to how to work uh, within the country. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, yes. We, during the work, we really studied the the, the national border. But um, that we we learn is that in these territories, the people who live there as uh, as a conscience of otherness, and uh, they are used to deal with otherness, even if it's complex, even if it, it, the people doesn't like each other, they they are really able to 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 reach this this uh, this point. So I think in the in your border, in the in the other border inside, this could be um, seen as a, an example of uh, of behavior. So I I will answer that. Uh, oh, sorry. No, yes, just to add something, I, I'm quite convinced that in the national border, uh, the, the main actual political issues, we can see them in, in, a, in a way more accurate in the national border, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you, did you change your perception or your definition of the border throughout this year? with the pandemic and the closing of the borders, because during those, this year, 2020, 2021, the, this space was suddenly just a line in many countries. And did you change your perception and how does uh, this affected your, your projects? You mean you speak about the pandemic? Yeah. yeah. Pandemic, of so, uh, just what we tried to say before is, I am quite sure that even we can say that the 20th century was the, the 20th century of metropolises of cities. I'm quite convinced that this century is. Uh, we, you can see it with the Brexit, with uh, the election of Trump, with the nationalism, with uh, migration crisis. You can see all these issues in the border, and the pandemic. You are right. Is one of these issues. And maybe it's a more recent one, but uh, yeah. I would like to to answer also. Um, we discover also that when the border closed in the in the middle of the pandemic, uh, that the border are really an, uh, a shared space, a collective space between country that is that the the, the people needs. So we had to invest as architects, uh, urbanism. We had to invest this, ter this territory because when they close, we feel that we miss something, and uh, and the pandemic showed us that we have to go there, we have to work there. So if there are no further questions from the public here on site, I have uh, received a question from the chat on my phone. It's directed to Vanessa. You say in the exhibition film that you think architects need to concern themselves more with borders as a collective space and act in those spaces. What kind of architectural interventions do you think are needed or would be effective on the border? Um, I think about understanding uh, the um, the first things we have to to do to act is try to understand the complexity is is not as simple to to build or to imagine the new territory in, in the border but we have to understand the complexity of the site and it will it will be my my first action to, to go there and to try to understand And uh, a question for Munir. What does the project say about our capacity to live together? Maybe ah. you could also go and make a, uh, go back to the, th the topic of the Biennale, um, yeah. how we will live together. Uh, to answer to this question uh, asked by Hashim Sarkis, maybe the, the, the more accurate place, the more urgent place to answer to her, his question, how we live together, the, together is in the border. How we live together in the border, maybe it, it, uh, it could be the more accurate question to, that we have to answer together. And the question for Vanessa again, maybe what is this project, why is this project 
uh, about architecture? What does it have to do <laughs> with architecture? Um, I, I would like to answer in, in two different uh, uh, things. The first is one I said just before, uh, borders are a sharing space. So uh, architecture is about sharing space, collective space. So, so the border has, to, has something to do with architecture. And the second thing is um, uh, we discover in, in this process and with the, all, all the team and all the inhabitants we involved that um, we can uh, make research by architecture. We made architecture together by building models, by, by going on site, visiting the site. Uh, we, we made architecture together and architecture helped us to understand the territory. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to sum up with a question for Madeleine Schupli. Mm -hmm. um, this project has been chosen out of uh, 51 applications that have been submitted to the Arts Council. Would you tell us why it was chosen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess the, the project was chosen for, I would say, mainly three reasons. One is um, certainly the, the topic of the border. That is really a, a relevant topic. Also a topic that is not so much um, treated so far. So there's still a lot to say what you demonstrate here uh, very well. Then, then secondly, it's, it's also the, um, uh, the way how you approached, uh, or the team then in their proposal um, said how they would approach the, the project. In, on the one hand, this collaboration, this participation with the people living on site, and on the other hand, this diverse team that you uh, um, uh, wanted to work with. And uh, thirdly, I would say it's this um, um, thing that the, the project has both. It is a political and sociological project and raises important and also difficult questions. And on the other hand, it's also, it has also a very poetic and artistic uh, side. So uh, I think that's a bit the way it could be. Um, summed up uh, why this specific project was chosen to, to do the pavilion, the Swiss pavilion here in Venice. Okay, thank you very much. Um, if there are no more questions, I think, um, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and draw your attention to the Swiss events at the Pavilion Days that are happening uh, on the 23rd to the 25th of September. And there's also the Salon Suisse uh, opening, the collateral event uh, happening at the same time. And you can find further information on biannuals.ch or follow our new Instagram channel, uh, Switzerland in Venice. And for all the journalists that are here and may, may go still to see the exhibition now, uh, in the entrance space when you, when you enter, you have a QR code that you can uh, scan and you can read more about each model and each story behind. So the numbers are written underneath each model. And uh, yes, I hope we were able to bring Venice a little bit uh, further to you or that you will be able to come closer to Venice and that you might be able to join us here later on during the year. Thank you very much and um, have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.